Hi guys, it's Dan here from Survive the Apocalypse. Um, I'm out here um, today by this lovely river. Um, been out here for quite a while and I've run out of water. Which isn't a massive problem because I'm by this river, but uh, this river flows through a couple of towns further upstream, so uh, we're going to have to treat it. And I'll show you how to do that um, sort of pretty effectively, you know. Um, yeah, so first thing is we'll, we're going to fill this up with some water. Okay, so uh, we've come up from the river now. We've got us um, mankey-ish looking water. It's not too bad actually, I've seen far, far worse. Um, given that you know, we've had a lot of rain, um, I expected the water to be a lot more uh, turbid. Um, turbid just means where you know, when you get a lot of rain it kicks up all, a lot of silt and um, it just really discolours the water. Um, part of the reason for filtering it. But given um, that that river does flow through a couple of towns there's going to be pollutants in it so um, that's partly the reason why we're going to be uh, filtering it through um, charcoal, sort of like a makeshift carbon filter. It's not an active carbon filter. Um, an active carbon filter is where um, the carbon is heat treated in a kiln. I um, can't remember the exact temperatures that it puts it up to, but um, that's basically what car uh, active carbon is. Um, so we're going to be making a, you know, a type of um, carbon filter and sediment filter, and then we're going to be boiling it, uh, which I'm going to be testing out my new stove um, that came the other day. Um, it took a very long time to arrive because I was um, planning on taking it to the coast with me. It arrived a week later than that. Um, but yeah, so I'll go through that in a bit anyway. So the next thing I, uh, I do want to get is I just want to pop down there um, and get some uh, moss that's uh, covering up pretty much all the rocks around here. And that'll act as our like, first layer filter. So I'll just go off, do that and then I'll go through the steps of actually making the filter itself. So, as you can see here, we've got moss, sphagnum moss. This is, well, there's a mixture of a couple of mosses, but we've got sphagnum moss. And what we want to try and do is, well, it's quite simple, really. Now we just want to pull off some sheets of it. That's plenty. The other thing you can use this for, uh, you rinse it out, I mean, it's very absorbent and soft. You can use this as a really good toilet paper, um, or even sanitary to towels. Has been used for that sort of thing in the past. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is our moss. This is pretty much all we'll need. Might get some of these bits here. Um, just to bulk up a bit more. So, what I've done is I've brought, got some charcoal here, um, I brought it from home, um, I just put it in a bit of um, clean film. Um, what we need to do is we need to crush this down into a powder. I've just got a stick here, um, just cut off the end, a bit of bark, just to uh, give me a bit of a sort of like pestle and mortar effect. So, um, so because the finer you can get it, the charcoal, the better absorption surf rate it's got because you're increasing the surface area. Um, I'm trying to think, I read somewhere where um, somebody had done some tests, I'm not exactly how accurate it was, but um, it's put down that one square millimetre of charcoal has the same surface absorption area as a tennis court and that's pretty amazing so that's where like I said you know if you've got any um, chemicals that are in the water and um, particularly if you're say if you're out camping near farmland and you've got things like pesticides herbicides that run off the fields um, you know it's you don't really want to be ingesting that and this is where you know a carbon filter really comes into effect 
So anyway, I'll carry I'll break all this down and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so there we go. Now it's pretty much there, you know, we could get it a bit finer. This has taken me a good sort of um, 10, 15 minutes. But there you go, you know, it's pretty much broken up and that should be about enough for what we want there. So the next step now is, what I'm going to do is from my bandana, I'm not particularly bothered about this bandana, um, I'm just going to cut with my knife a bit off here to put that into. So that's going to be the next step. Okay now, so we're pretty much ready to uh, put the, uh, the filter together. Well, the only thing really I want to do now is I just want to this bottle here, you know, bottles by rivers and by the sea are inevitable, especially plastic ones. So what you want to do is you want to cut the top off or the bottom off, should I say, like that. Don't need that. We'll just pop that there. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to try and make a hole in the lid and that's where the water's going to drip out from. You know, you don't want something too big. That's probably too big, but it'll be, it'll do. It'll do. So, the lid goes back on the bottom. The bit of bandana that we've cut off, cut that into your hand and then put the charcoal powder into that. And then just, you don't have to tie it up, just rub you know, just wrap it over like that, so you get a little pouch. That goes into the bottom. Of the bottle. Try and get it in as tight as you can. Now. So that's, that's pretty good. And the next step is the gravel that, and sand that we took from the side of the river and then we washed it um, to get rid of you know, the very fine sediment that was in there. You know, I gave it a really good wash. Um, so we take, trying to, Take the finer stuff first if you can. It's not always possible, but you just want to uh, get that in there, give it a good tamper down, put a bit more in, and then tamp that down. Nice and firm. So so far we've got two layers. We've got the carb, um, the charcoal, and the cloth, and then the um, the gravel. And then the next step is to get try and get a cleaner piece as possible. Um, what I like to do is just fold it in on itself, and again, just to make a nice tight little bundle and just shove that down on top of there and just do the same with the stick, just give it a compact down. And basically that they have your filter, that's the filter. So we've got moss, gravel, charcoal. Ideally you'd want some finer sand, something a bit finer here. Um, but we haven't got access to that, so this is this is probably gonna have to do. 
Um, I might just put a couple of holes into the side here, put some paracord through it so I can hang it and then just drip, drip feed the water through into the can. So that'll be sort of like next. So, all I've done here is, like I said, I've just uh, put a couple of holes through the, uh, the bottle. I've just strung this up and just um, hung it off a branch. So I'm just going to put my billy can underneath. And I've done it so it's a bit lower than what it is. And we're just going to steadily pour in the water and try not to get any in the actual <clears throat> billy can itself. So I've actually got the bottle a bit further this way, so if I spill it over, it's not going to go down. This is going to take quite a bit of time to filter through. There we go, it's starting to go through now. I mean, it's not going to be absolutely crystal clear. Um, But it's uh, that that carbon is you know it's gonna it's gonna take out some of the debris. I mean once we've got um, the uh, this water filtered, the next step will be to boil it. Um, there are going to be things in you know in this um, in that water like cryptosporidium um, and other little nasties. Um, you know there's that river further up, you know, passes through um, sheep farmland, um, so there's, you know, and cattle, so there's going to be, you know, bits of faeces and all sorts in it. So uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just carry on, you know, just slowly. Like the slower it actually starts to go through, um, it means everything's settled down and it'll be a lot tighter and the water that's coming through is a lot cleaner already so I might actually, just that first bit, I might just dump that first bit there and then we'll just go with the rest that's coming through yeah that's a lot cleaner so I'll just carry on doing this and then I'll show you afterwards just decided to pee it down with rain so uh, anyway it doesn't look like it's going to stop and today I um, yeah I didn't I uh, didn't bring my tarp with me today but you know these are the challenges we uh, were often faced with in uh, you know in survival so we'll make the best of it and we'll just carry on regardless you know you say the show must go on so in here, I have about a liter of water, um, which is slowly increasing with the rain. So that's the water. This is my and that. Luckily, I've got a little bit of charcoal that's left that I didn't use. That might now come in handy. So, in here is this new little uh, wood gas stove that I thought I would bring, would use it, test it out. It cost me, grand total, including postage, um, 12 quid off um, an auction, online auction website comes in a few parts of the, so you've got the base there, now we're just going to put on this, um, that's the top where your pan sits and then there's this part, now this is what they call um, a wood gas stove and what it's designed to do is um, you get your fire going in the bottom and it reburns 
um, some of the gases that don't get burnt if you're just having a, a conventional fire, supposedly. Um, you can pay up to sort of like 60, 70 quid for these. Um, I thought I'd try one of the cheap alternatives first. Um, admittedly, I've never used one of these before. Um, so trying to do it in the rain is going to be, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a challenge. So, but anyway. It's just hammering it down. So, next step is I've before it started raining. Luckily, I've got to keep it in my pocket. But just here, I've got a load of birch bark, um, which I'm going to try and lighten the bottom of here. Um, and then I did pick up some twigs as well, which are behind me, you know, under a tree, but they're still getting wet. So. Yeah, getting a fire going is not going to be easy, but we'll go, we'll give it a go anyway. So I'll just um, get my tinder kit out and we'll get going. Well, because everything is now soaked, I'm having to... Uh, I've got a bit of dead wood here. I'm just now trying to make some more kindling like I would do for you know if I was having a, a regular fight campfire um, I mean this stove is designed to just run off twigs I have got some in my pocket that I'm trying to dry off but everything else is now pretty soaked so I need some fuel that's reasonably dry and this isn't too bad in the middle. Uh, it could be better. But well, we'll just have to see. I'm also trying to keep this little pile here covered with my body to stop the rain getting to it. So all I did was, I just uh, brought my um, Laplander saw out with me and I just cut some sections about that big. So hopefully this is going to work. This Swiss Army knife I've got, I've had it for about five, six years. It's still going strong. Uh, it's a bit damp on the outside, but. Oh, hey ho. Anyway, I'm just going to continue doing this for a bit. Get roughly what I think I'll need for boiling that water up and then. Come rain or shine, we'll get on with it. So, okay, so I'm just going to try and get on with it now. So, this is the birch bark that we got. That fluffed up in there. I'm going to just try and get that lit straight off. There's a little bit of a lull in the rain at the moment. In fact, what I've got in here, I've got a bit of cotton wool. It's from a cotton wool pad. I'm going to use that should be dry. If I just get that nestled in there, and then that should just that should be should really take a spark easily. Should. 
Yeah. Next up. Are these twigs in there? Taking off a fair bit of smoke, that. Right? Well, it's, it's more the water that's evaporating than anything else. And then what I'll do is I'll just chuck in those bits of charcoal that were left over. At least we won't have to worry about the mozzies now. Well, he's got going. There's hardly any smoke now coming from it, which is fantastic. While that's happening, I'm just um, splitting the rest of this, these bits of wood to keep it going. Um, so yeah, not bad going this at all. I think um, I'll have to try and bake uh, bake some uh, some bread, some uh, baddock on this. I think that'll be another video. But. You can see inside some nice jets coming up from the from the outside. So the uh, it's yeah it's it's burning the gas, it's reburning the gas is really efficient. It's working really well now. I'm quite impressed. You know, for twelve quid, I mean, what's starting to boil? Ah, I'm taking. Less than ten, less, definitely less than ten minutes. Fantastic. Once this water comes to a rolling boil, it's clean, it's sterile. It's drinking water there. We can use it, we can drink it, we can cook with it. Brilliant, fantastic. Okay, so we have got a rolling boil. That's been boiling now for a few minutes. So, uh, so yeah. <coughs> oh. Yeah, sorry, man. So, uh, yeah, this water is now good. It's clean, it's sterile, um, it's good to drink. So, uh, I'm going to take it off now and, um, yeah, let it cool down a bit. Okay, so we've. Um, as you saw the water boiled, we've got a, a good full rolling boil there. Um, I've just let it cool down, it's still a bit warm. Um, so I'm just going to transfer that into the water bottle. Um, I've already drunk some of it. Um, just because I was thirsty. Didn't drink much of it, but there we go. So, just shy of a litre there.
you know what, that don't taste off too bad at all. It's pretty good. Mm. Yeah. So, anyway, that water now, that is safe. We filtered it using the filter. Um, we should remember it's, uh, well, it's still hanging. Right, hold up. Ugh. There we go. So, well, there's still a bit of water dripping out of that. So, like I said, we've got the moss, the gravel, and then the charcoal and the cloth dripping into the uh, container. In this case, um, it's the billy can. Uh, the more water you try putting it, th put through it, uh, the slower um, it will filter. Cause, you know, you're starting to clog up with um, with bits and bobs, and certainly the um, the murkier the water, the more sediment that's in the water, the uh, the, the slower that process is going to be. But um, so that was step one. Step two, we boiled the water. Uh, sorry, so so step one was to get rid of um, like any toxins, um, chemicals. You know, that's like uh, from that runs off from farmland or any industrial stuff. I mean, that's not going to get rid of everything. There's an element of caution that you do have to take here. Um, this is a, um, a makeshift filter. This isn't something that I would recommend that you go out and do on you know, a daily basis. You know, there are. Um, carbon active filters you can go out there and buy specifically um, which will do a much better job than this this is um, a survival method so if you need to um, this is a method that will work better than just boiling uh, on its own because boiling doesn't get rid of the chemicals in fact in some circumstances boiling um, actually enhances some of the chemicals um, makes them more potent so um, but anyway so yeah the first stage where we did that was we uh, we filtered the water and then the boiling process um, you don't just want to get it to a boil and then take it off you want to boil it for a, I'd say a good three minutes um, as a rule of thumb um, the getting it to a good rolling boil will kill off any bacteria or any viruses that are in there. I mean, it's not it's very unlikely there's going to be viruses in the water anyway. Viruses need a host to, um, to live in. A bit like parasites, really. Um, but parasites can live outside of a body for a long, longer period of time. Viruses um, are very limited um, to how long they can live outside the body. Uh, it's usually a matter of hours. Um, so there's, you don't there's not a huge risk from viruses, but there's but there's a big risk from bacteria, so like um, protozoa, um, E. coli, um, there's you know yellow fever. Um, there's, there's loads of different uh, like cholera, loads of different things that you know possibly could be in the water that could be contaminated. Um, so it's it's important that you reach a good rolling boil, and that will that will kill off pretty much most of the bacteria. I'm not going to say it's going to kill off all bacteria because if you go to places like Yosemite National Park in the um, in the US, um, you know, there are um, what they call extremophiles where you get bacteria that will live in waters that are basically constantly boiling and very sulfurous water as well. They'll live in extreme environments. Um, and these are the sorts of things that they think, you know, that are possibly living on Mars. If there is anything on Mars, it's going to be these type of bacteria. Um, and there, on, to the other side, there are bacteria that you'll find in glaciers, you know, that are surviving in temperatures of minus 50. So, and for very, very long periods of time. So it's, you know, it's important that you, you know, you do boil the water. That will, that will get, get rid of pretty much everything. Um, like I said, I'm not going to say it's going to. It's not a hundred percent guarantee, but it, you know, you 
your farm is more safe from. I mean, I've done this um, out in the field quite a few times. I'm quite happy to drink this water. I mean, that tastes pretty much the same as it comes out of my tap. Given that I live five miles away from here and the reservoirs that, that come from this water source, it's the same water, you know. So, anyway, I hope, you know, you've, you've learnt something here. Um, it's been a while since I've done this technique uh, myself. So it's a you know it's a good way of uh, getting a practice um, for myself going. Um, this is you know a very um, this is definitely a, you know a survival technique. Um, if you were, you can take this technique anywhere in the world, um, and you're pretty much going to be good with uh, with the water that you're drinking. Um, so the other thing is um, the stove. Still a bit of heat in there. It's nearly, nearly all gone. Performance for a stove that costs twelve pound on uh, eBay. It took forever to get here. Um, you do have to. Oh, can hear a buzzard. Uh, no, it was up there somewhere. I heard him. Um, yeah, for a 12 quid stove that you can get off eBay, it's not bad at all. Um, pros, um, it's easy to get going. Uh, you, you know, you've got a contained fire. You could, you know, you could use this in areas where you're not allowed to have an open fire on the ground. I've put this on a rock. You could put it on some logs. You're not going to set fire to the ground. Um, once it, it takes a bit of going, I mean, it's still raining a little bit I mean it absolutely siled it down when I got here um, and that's one of the important things of always making sure you keep your tinder dry because when it's obviously when everything's wet it's very difficult to uh, to get fire going that's why I um, split um, you know that very small log um, into very small pieces I did have some um, some small sticks that I managed to get in there. I managed to get them in my pocket before it started raining, as well as um, a handful of birch bark. But to really get it going, um, the saving grace I think in that was that I had the um, a little bit of cotton wool. Um, that's a what you call a flash tinder that got the birch bark going, which then I could get. Um, smaller sticks going and then get the the little bits that I'd been chopping up going on top of that produced a load of smoke to start with so everything was damp uh, once it got up to a good heat the smoke disappeared altogether and it was burning very efficiently you could see the little jets coming up from the from the little side holes that are around the um, the inside of the rim um, I'd say cons wise the you have to keep feeding it you can't put something on and just leave it you know particularly if you want to boil water you pretty much having to constantly throw twigs in there um, so it's not like a campfire where you can get a good campfire going and you can leave it for hours and it'll you know it'll burn and burn um, I mean this is I can get my hand basically right in the. I mean, there's a bit of the. I chucked a couple of pieces of that charcoal in. There's one sort of like chunk of charcoal in there that's giving off the heat. If it wasn't for that, it'd be cold. Um, so yeah, keeping it going is. That's the. I would say that's the con for me. Apart from that, it's brilliant. It will be coming out with me. Um, I'll be using it probably on a on a fairly regular basis. Um, size wise, it fits in my billy can. Um, I did get a light, slightly larger billy can, so that would so this would accommodate it. Um, so it does have a nice sort of like pack size. On the downside, with both the billy can and that being stainless steel, it's quite heavy. Um, in an ideal world, I'd have titanium and it would be as light as my wallet. 
I'm a New Yorkshireman, so I've got a very light wallet. <laughs> um, but yeah, but hey, but yeah, it's been a, it's been interesting. You know, it's been the first good test for it. Um, the next one, I'm going to uh, come out here again. I think I'll come to this same spot because it's a lovely little spot. It's very quiet, no one around. It's a youngish sort of woodland. Um, and the next one, I'm going to come out. I'm going to do some um, bake some baddock, which is um, like a. If you don't know what baddock is, it's a like a, a campsite bread. You do um, usually done in a Dutch oven, but my Billy can comes with like a little frying pan. You can put the lid on top of that, and it's not much different. So that is going to be the next episode, I think. So anyway, let's say hope you've learned something here. Um, you know, if you've got any questions or you know you want to add any comments or anything, just um, put them in the in the comment uh, bar below. I'll try and respond to as many as I can. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching this. And um, let's say you've got another one coming up soon. Uh, we're going to do Bannock. We're going to do it on this stove. You know, really going to test this little stove out. See what you can do with it. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to shut up now. So thanks for watching. See you again soon. And. Brilliant, the sun's actually coming out. Fantastic. I think we'll pack up and go for a bit of a walk. Anyway, see you later.